Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, another entry here based on one of your past suggestions. This one is a really cool one because it coincides with a topic that that was just at the convention uh, that was there in Dallas, the Texas Frightmare Weekend. First time I was ever there, it was a really cool surprise that one of the quote-unquote panels, in this case more of a documentary showing, had to do with the world of cryptids. In this this case, one of the most popular cryptids of all, the Boggy Creek Monster, who those of you who have heard of it, of course, know more of the film, the documentary or the docudrama of the legend of Boggy Creek. And so it was so cool to see that on the panel listing. Eight o'clock at night, I was there. You're looking at a picture of it here, in fact. The gentleman that's right there, his name is Lyle Blackburn. He is a cryptozoologist who is absolutely uh, amazed by the legend of Boggy Creek as well. He has gone there so many times, he said in the panel, he has done a lot of research and it premiered, uh, I guess you'd call it a premiere of sorts, the movie here. You're looking at a picture of it now. Boggy Creek Monster, the truth behind the legend. That is a film that was just released last year. Limited release first and then it was just mainly VOD type stuff. But he helped gather a lot of the information, did a lot of interviews, narrated the thing, and it was also also produced by a guy from the Blair Witch, if you could believe that too, Eduardo Sanchez, the original Blair Witch, one of the directors. He also produced this film because he, in turn, is apparently a big cryptozoologist or cryptic fan as well. So, lots of cool stuff, amazing the coincidences involved, and so that's why I decided to pick this one here involving the legend of Boggy Creek so or at other times known as the folk monster so uh, of course I can't provide like even the best info nothing like this documentary that I saw the other day but if you have a chance check it out it's on Amazon he said it's throughout multiple other internet channels so it is pretty good I mean it's about maybe 70 something minutes long or so and as I was watching it, I was amazed at the level of detail that they went into it. No, unfortunately, no like real footage in terms of the Bobby Creek monster, but there was at least other testimonials and other type of interviews, actual spot locations. Like they were right at the very specific location and that the and that the people being interviewed stated that they saw this monster so that was really cool too you know how I love doing that in these videos here where if I can try to find a picture of the actual location involving the cryptid and where it was found that's the same thing too so pretty cool stuff so let's go ahead let's talk about this the Boggy Creek monster very very famous cryptid so what is this Boggy Creek monster well again it's one of the most well-known cryptids at least here within the United States it's known by various names uh, the Bond Creek Monster, the Folk Monster another version is the Southern Sasquatch and the reason for the, at least the title of the Folk Monster is because that's where it's found um, it's supposed to be near a creek, a boggy creek, you know, no doubt, but it's there by Folk Arkansas. What's interesting too is that the, in the documentary they showcased Boggy Creek itself. It's a tiny creek. You could, you would imagine it, you know, with something this big, this massive, this 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 legend that has stretched out for decades, that it would be just a gigantic lake. But no, in this case, it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny creek. And yet here is this creature that's supposed to live within that area. And then as far as what it looks like, it just basically looks like your average Sasquatch. No other difference really I mean nothing really else stands out with regards to it it's large larger than a human the people that were interviewed said and estimated about seven feet tall yet another woman though that was interviewed within a documentary stated that she saw it standing next to one of those bundles of hay the ones that you always see within the fields that's gathered up in that circle and she said that it dwarfed it like it was up to its waist at the highest level so imagine a bundle of hay and then two times as large and that's what you're looking at here in terms of the boggy creek monster it's supposed to also just have your standard sasquatch like hair like long stringy like hair just completely unkempt um, it has ape like features neanderthal like features to the extreme sloping forehead very long arms uh, so much so that one of the people interviewed also 
stated that the arms go past its knees. So it, it, it may be because this thing is always sloping. Everyone that was describing it mentioned that it's always sloping forward, like it has like a bad uh, back hunch on it. So maybe that's why it gave the perception that its arms were pretty long but who knows again they didn't really see a clear sight of this creature at least long enough to like take very good details and then um, the only other thing that really stood out some of them stated that it has those red eyes blazing red eyes so one of them mentioned it was along the lines of like like an intense sunlight like an intense candle something like that and so that was very very fascinating because just the other day I just did a cryptid called the Big Red Eye, and so it's interesting to see two cryptids, and one more well-known, sharing that very, very same information, too. But that's pretty much it. That's all the characteristics, really, that stand out of the Bond Creek Monster. I guess if you wanted to stretch something else, there's the idea also that it has a, a, an ugly ugly smell like absolutely disgusting you're supposed to smell it before you see it like it has this just putrid rancid rotting smell almost like a dumpster that has never been uh, taken out in years something along those lines so that could be this creature itself uh, whenever you're in that area and you come across it and let's say you smell something like this then you know you are in the vicinity of this creature oh yes one more thing to point out too that makes it a little different some other people interviewed stated that they saw it have this and then also there's casts of it it's supposed to be a three i guess footprint or three foot fingerprint footprint whatever is the case three digits in other words on its foot on the ground rather than the standard five and the way that uh, that lyle was explaining it because he was questioned on this afterward on the q a he stated that it's a possibility that it could be something just genetic because of the fact that these are creatures and he emphasized the word creatures not just one but multiple his his reasoning being that there's a high likelihood that uh something like this having existed for so long you couldn't have just one being essentially you would have to have a family of them continuing generation after generation but because they're so limited that there's inbreeding that he realized he surmised that it may be because of that just genetic defects in terms of the inbreeding or it could be on the lines of just injuries uh, stuff happening out there in the woods nothing really they can do if they lose a digit so they just in turn continue with in this case three digits or it could just be that that's how the creature is but he also stated that there are other casts and footprints of five toed creature rather than let's say the three digit creature so all interesting stuff but just another fascinating point involving the boggy creek monster now as far as when it was first encountered i was looking up the info online and it was stating that the encounters of course the more standard one go into like around the 70s or so that's because of course if 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 you ever hear the uh, word boggy creek you instantly think of that movie that docudrama, the one of the legend of Boggy Creek, that almost cult-like a legendary status movie that to this day is pretty hard to find a good print of, but it's still out there. It This is a movie that took on a life of its own when it was released back in the 1970s. And the reason for it was because it kind of like took people by surprise in terms of its effectiveness. It was supposed to just be just a campy thing, but it seemed like the fear that it produced, the way that it truly used real people, because the people that were there in the movie, the way Lionel explained it, were either A, some of the witnesses within Boggy Creek Legend, like they actually saw the creature and so they played themselves, or they were locals who played other locals. So in other words, they're not actors, like they're not people that um, that were playing things up. No, in this case, they were real people. Maybe that added to its effectiveness. Also because I've seen parts of the movie, I haven't seen all of it though. To me, it looked a little campy, but then again, it's, it's like something made in the 70s. It's just a whole different era. But uh, it seemed like it was so low budget that it just adds to its effectiveness. Like it, it makes it seem much more real. But yes, lots of the residents were interviewed there from the 70s 
trees and they were explaining how they have encountered ape-like creatures there from the 40s and in fact the documentary that I saw yesterday even stretched it out even further stating that since the 1800s late 1800s there were reports in this case involving like uh, monsters or hairy like monsters encountered within various parts of that region um, in, in some cases even in some of the papers there I guess you call those papers they were describing it um, and they, they were stating it like it was known as the Jonesville monster something along those lines but it could have been that it stretched back even that far but in either case the usual circumstance is this as far as the encounters with the Boggy Creek monster it's seen from afar this creature then stares back at them and then it just disappears it is absolutely a very very shy creature it does no harm apparently to people and in fact it's more scared of the people than it than the people are of them multiple witnesses within the film I saw yesterday stated that same routine they inadvertently came across this folk monster and when they did so they saw it from afar it turned and looked at them and in one case like I was stating earlier one of the witnesses describing the fiery eyes that it had and then the creature would just simply run off there were though two circumstances involving very close encounters that seemed to take this a little further one of them was a lady I believe it was Mrs. Ford who was stating that she in turn had this hairy arm or something come through her window almost towards her and when that happened uh, like she was sleeping in some area within that room that's when her family I guess her husband some of the brothers there decided to chase it away like with shotguns but that was a really really close encounter and then another one involved a younger boy who is stating that uh, it went, at least at that time he was stating that he was there I guess going towards some swampland because that's also why this creature is so hard to find so much of that area there is just pure uninhibited uninhabited uh, very very hard terrain to lit to walk through to let alone live through Arkansas type uh, uh, swampland and so in this case there he was in that same swampland I guess he was trying to get go fish or something but it was very fog like and when that happened he smelled it and then he saw this looming shadow of some kind in front of him it turned it saw him like it smelled him in turn and then slowly approached him and then he took out his shotgun fired multiple times did not hit him or did hit him but didn't impact the folk monster at all and then he began running and then that's when this thing started running after him didn't catch him didn't do anything else but just ran at him for a little bit and then that was it so that was yet another very uh, scary very close encounter the only two that really stood out in terms of this Boggy Creek monster trying to do anything bad towards the people there but otherwise that's that's just yet a tiny tiny amount of info that was about this folk monster there's still decades worth of stuff to talk about i mean there's more interviews involving this there's the uh the 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 legend of in this case of what is it Oh, all those little souvenir shops that are there. I mean, it's taken on its life of its own. It's like the Loch Ness Monster of that region. The documentary also focused on the mythology of this creature. I mean, there was this gas station, I guess you'd call it that, that has become, I guess, the, play, the place to go to in the world of cryptids. Because if you go there, it's really cool. There's a gigantic Bigfoot greeting you at the very, very top of the gas station. And once you're inside, you'll see all these amazing just trinkets galore when it comes to the world of cryptids. And the way the documentary was describing it, it was stating that here is this tiny, tiny town. It shouldn't even be a blip on anybody's map. And yet now, because of this creature, because of this folk monster, it has now become the place to go to when it comes to the world of cryptids. All because of just one creature, or multitude of creatures, if you go by the theory that Lau was mentioning. And in this case, it's the Boggy Creek Monster. So very, very fascinating information. I was amazed, absolutely amazed at the documentary. So again, I do highly recommend it if you have a chance 
chance, rent it on Amazon or buy it if you can. And then that way you'll get to see lots of really good, uh, more detailed information about this folk monster. Uh, the only other thing really to mention is that, uh, that there was a nice little thing there too on the Q&As afterward. Uh, somebody asked about the... Um, the, the YouTube videos involving cryptids. Now, I don't know if they were talking about mine. I don't think so, but they were talking about the stuff in general. And he they were asking Lyle, like in his case, because he's a uh, cryptozoologist who's able to travel to these places directly and then try to do very in-depth research. I mean, the stuff he went through was amazing. Like, he went through the places uh, that some of the homes that appeared in the original docudrama, they're now dilapidated, they're gone, but he was able to find them and he was able to um, showcase them within the documentary and so they asked him about those internet videos and then he stated that it's good he was stating that it's very very good in terms of sharing that information to a whole new world but at the same time he said that some of the other ones he can consider to be what he called white noise like in other words it's repetition of stuff maybe stuff that um that just doesn't make sense but that was really interesting for him to be able to to talk about that so uh, it was quite fascinating to see him and and be able to share that information but my hats off again to him for the wonderful work that he's done uh with regards to this 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 movie so very very good stuff uh, but it, does anybody have any other information to share anything else that they know about this boy creek monster anybody been down there before to arkansas well, one last thing to point out too, you can go there, you can try to hunt for this creature if you want. Hunt in a sense like if you want to capture evidence, don't do anything bad of course to it, but the idea is you can do that, but you have to be careful. Well, I was mentioning that um, a lot of that land down there is still, I guess you could call it unincorporated, like it's it's stuff that's not public domain, but it's not really owned by someone. It let, and so certain places are, of course, and if you fall into that private land, then you run at risk of, of, of being um, um, an unauthorized private land. But... Uh, you can go down there, like, just way through the creek if you want, if you wanted to camp someplace out there. Now, you can't live out there, per se, but if you wanted to go out there and just try to spend some time, you can do so. Just be sure to absolutely follow the rule of the law there when it comes to which land is okay to do so and which land is not, and then you'll be fine. He was even stating that every now and then they'll hold these campsites, like, they'll hold, like, these camping ventures out there, kind of like a crypto hunt, if you will, and and if you go out there with them, then you'll be able to spend the night trying to see if you can find evidence. How cool is that? So if that ever happens sometime in the future, I'll try to see if I can go with those options too. But that's pretty much it. So if anyone has any other info, Legend of Bonnie Creek, Bonnie Creek Monster, also known as the Folk Monster, please post those comments below. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.